Greetings to all. Welcome to the India Toy Fair 2021, a mega toy show on virtual platform, the first ever digitally accessible exhibition and platform to explore and buy a variety of toys from over 1,000 exhibitors across 30 states and union territories of India. The mega event is being organized in response to Honorable Prime Minister's clarion call to turn India into a global toy hub. The Indian toy manufacturing industry has been facing uh, many challenges, some of them being lack of innovation in terms of design, the invasion of imported mass manufactured toys, etc. So it's a big make in India push for domestic manufacturers who couldn't have been more thrilled and excited with the vision of Honorable Prime Minister. The concept of uh, toys for children with special needs originated from the need of mainstreaming such children who are unable to exhibit learning outcomes similar to their normal peers. Special toys for uh, this category can go a long way in their intellectual, behavioral, and emotional development. For children with disabilities, toys are not only a wonderful educational tool, but they can provide a unique opportunity for communication, self-expression, and special inclusion. So in this webinar, we will be contemplating and focusing on toys for children with special needs, development of multi-sensory products. It's uh, a privilege to have with us Shrimati Shakuntala D. Gamlin, Secretary, Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Welcome, ma'am. Thanks for being with us. And let me also introduce the panelists. We have Saloni Mehta, co-founder and CEO of Tactopus Learning Private Limited. Nupur Agarwal is here. She's the director of Beyond Braille. And we also have with us Amrita. She's the CEO of Stepping Stone Center. Welcome, everyone. So let's uh, begin with uh, a presentation by Saloni Mehta. As I said, she's the co-founder and CEO of Tactopus Learning Private Limited. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Saloni, as um, Ridhu has already introduced. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Tactopus, where we work with young children who think, learn, and grow differently. Um, sorry. Um, we work on their educational outcomes and other developmental milestones uh, via two methods. Primarily, uh, we host uh, special education classes and related services via the online medium to make it accessible for children across the country. Uh, but I'll be speaking more about the multisensory learning aids uh, that we developed for these children in today's conversation. And I'll also touch upon uh, how parents and teachers can choose the right multisensory aid for their children, right? Um, jumping in some background, uh, or every child, in fact, all of us have multiple domains of development. This could be physical growth, this could be social emotional, there is cognition, um, and there is speech and communication. But one core bit of uh, development is how your senses work. Uh, contrary to popular belief, there are actually seven senses uh, that we look at. So there is the usual sight, smell, taste, and hearing, hearing and touch. Uh, but there's also the ability to balance yourself, which is vestibular, and uh, the ability to to sense motion and movement, right? That is proprioception. Um, and how a child responds to each of these inputs or outputs is how you would decide what kind of learning aids, toys would they need, right? I'll very briefly touch upon what do we mean by multisensory? Because we are going to be using that term quite a bit today. Um, so essentially any learning method or any method in fact that uses more than one sense simultaneously is multisensory. The more the better for multiple reasons. Uh, one is that it just stimulates the brain more, right? So our primary, in our schools, uh, we primarily use two modes, two senses. One is visual, that is when we look at textbooks or we're looking at things happening. And the second is auditory, which is when we're hearing the teacher speak. And in today's digital world, it's also when we are looking at videos and stuff like that um, and hearing videos. 
Uh, the other, what we like to do is also incorporate the other senses, right? The sense of touch, being able to play, the being able to move and do. Um, and that improves, that, that makes it all more hands-on, uh, improving and stimulating the brain better. The other benefit, and in today's context, is becoming more accessible for young children who have sensory impairments, right? So if there's someone um, who cannot see, how are you going to teach them what uh, an elephant looks like or anything that is used, which uses images as a medium to communicate to uh, any child? And so that's where tactile graphics comes in. That's where touch comes in. Uh, you can play with quantities physically. And so you're starting with the physical and moving into the abstract, right? Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the products that we work on. Um, so we create, uh, we have something called a digital system, which is simply put physical plus digital put together. Uh, so we have physical products, uh, which are tactile. Uh, they look like any other products, but you have things and elements that you can touch. There is some braille out there for uh, kids with vision impairment. They're all color coded uh, to make it more accessible for children with autism. Um, and so we take care of the fact that they are inclusive for children with different learning difficulties or sensory impairments uh, while being inclusive for all children so that you can learn and play with your peers, right? You don't have to feel left behind or you like, uh, we don't need to necessarily call them special learning aids. Um, and how they work is that you can use them directly, but if you don't have like an auditory explanation or you don't have a teacher who is working with you at that time and you want some independence, we have a mobile application that helps you read this content. So for example, um, if you look at a counting book, which is in the picture uh, with the girl playing with the counting book, uh, if you open to a page, there are tactile trees, which is which are trees images of trees that you can touch. Um, the app looks at this, it will speak out um, how many trees can you count? And then now the girl has to touch and she can answer with a flashcard, which is a number flashcard. So you could, if she puts three, it will say, oh, correct, uh, very good job done, right? But if you answered incorrectly, so say she put four, uh, it would say four, uh, uh, that's incorrect, could you try again? And so we have multiple such uh, learning aids for different topics, largely focused on STEM as of now. Um, and this helps teachers with teaching more students more efficiently, and it helps children learn while having, while playing and having fun. Uh, brief, uh, quickly moving on to what you can do um, and how teachers can understand what their child's sensory needs are, right? We look at it from three points. So first is observe your child, try to figure out um, what the child likes, dislikes, how are they responding? And we have an aid that I'll be showing very quickly that helps you build a sensory profile for your child. And you'll then use the sensory profile to choose the right aids, right? So first step, as I said, is observe your child's response to sensory stimuli. Um, how does he or she react to a bright room or to sound? Does he or she close uh, their ears? Um, so these are things that you'll be noting down. Um, and using that, you'll create a sensory profile, right? So does he or she seek visual, but avoid auditory, likes proprioception, keeps spinning because that is something they're seeking. And you'll make a note, you'll keep this, create a profile out of this, keep this handy, share it with your school's therapists and close friends so that you know how to react to a child doing some things. Um, we have like a quick checklist for parents if you don't know what you should be seeking and, um, you can ping us separately and we, I'll be happy to share this checklist later, but it's on the screen uh, for folks who want to maybe just pause and have a look at it. Um, and using this, you can create the profile that I spoke about earlier. And now you can use this. You have your uh, sensory profile checklist, right? You have your profile, which means you can now use this as a cheat sheet to select the right toys, games, learning methods for your child. So for example, if you have a child who, um, is stimulated by uh, touch and tactile and also likes colors, usually uh, happens quite often in uh, children with autism. Um, you could use, for example, the number line that's on the screen at the bottom, right? So here you would have flashcards and it's a color matching game because the child seeks colors. 
um, and at the end of the day, they end up learning number sequences. Similarly, you can figure out according to the senses that your child seeks or avoids how to manipulate existing toys. So you have your regular flashcards, simple things you can get in the market or print or make at home. How can you adapt it, uh, add sound or add glitter uh, that will make it more inclusive for your child? Um, and that's kind of about it from me. Thank you so much. And I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. So thank you, Saloni. Well, you're doing a wonderful job in making these multi-sensory, well, this multi-sensory approach incorporating the learning styles for visual and tactile and auditory learners. It's perfect. But tell me, um, what kind of research uh, do you use in making these products? Because I'm sure, uh, you know, for uh, innovating such products, there's a lot of uh, research, you know, you have to base your products on. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, cool. So uh, we've, I think when we started off, and this was almost four, five years ago, uh, we started off at IIT Bombay. Uh, I was a student there. Um, and that's when uh, it started as a project for audio labeling uh, of tactile graphics, and we've come a long way since. Uh, there's a lot of research that we haven't done ourselves, quite frankly, uh, which uh, has proven that the multisensory ways of doing things improves engagement in children and increases learning outcomes. What we do is uh, we co-create our learning aids at schools for children with special needs um, and we record engagement levels with content that they would have not engaged with as much if you didn't have these learning aids, right? So we have tested our products, for example, uh, with uh, in schools of children with autism where there was a child who would not engage with math at all, but he would play with our math game for over um, half an hour sitting in one place. So the engagement itself is a big achievement. And then we do um, qualitatively look at feedback from teachers and parents where they see improved results in the overall development of their child, right? Uh, also, as I said, um, we actually use these products hand in hand with our online classes. So we have educators who are working with children directly as well. Uh, and so the teachers are able to record progress as they go. And it's a it's a personalized child to child basis thing. So I can't give you like flat numbers or some such. So what is the mechanism for training the facilitators? You know, sure. to implement these solutions. Yeah. Um, so in the modality where we have our products going to existing special needs schools, uh, we often have like when a whole kit goes, we set up like a lavish uh, situation in the school. We go in or someone from our team would go in and train the teachers there on how to, um, you know, oftentimes they're not sure how to install the apps, how to use it correctly. Or what would you do in a situation where you have someone who is completely blind versus someone who is autistic, right? So a, te a team would go in. Um, and train them first off. Uh, it's a one or two day training kind of period. And then we touch base with them uh, uh, in the first few months. It is a weekly touch base. And after that, it is on demand. So the Tactopus support team is always available. So the teachers just, you know, lift, call us up and we help them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful work you're doing. And Thanks. now we move on to our uh, next speaker. We have uh, Nupur Agarwal the director of Beyond Rail, and uh, she has been working uh, for the visually impaired uh, children uh, with special needs. So, Nupur, over to you. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, panel. I'm Nupur Agarwal, founder of uh, Initiative Beyond Rail. Beyond Rail is, uh, I'll just introduce you to the brand. Beyond Rail is a one-of-a-kind tactile picture series we have designed for the visually impaired community. The entire series comes as a breakthrough research for the visually impaired because this is perhaps for the first time that they'll be able to sense the pictures uh, with their uh, haptic touch uh, like never before. Similar to how sighted learns or plays with a picture book, even a visually impaired can do that. Yeah, so uh, as we all know that most of the information which we usually consume books in the schools to restaurants in the menus, yet Precisely, there is a significant minority of human population uh, who suffers from visual impairment. 
and in that case they usually miss out on a lot of critical information that is conveyed through pictures so to be specific out of 39 million blind population globally 15 million of india making our country home to which are available for the visual community to communicate information and what problems do they face with the existing methods though a lot of methods have already been developed to communicate information to the visually impaired one such method is braille so how can we make the act of reading pictures more interesting to the visually impaired community and spark a love for reading that would last with them for lifetime one of the ways which we came across was through tactile picture books so what are tactile picture books tactile picture books are books that is read with fingers they consist of embossed or you can say raised objects and figures which are simplified for the visually impaired to understand these tactile uh, products and sensory products offer them a fun and colorful approach to these challenging issues so these products not only help in developing their fine motor skills but it also helps build confidence and self esteem in them so in india tactile picture books do exist but they are not mainstreamed yet they are usually found in these library shelves in schools for just for reference purposes so seeing this entire scenario and the current situation we thought that this could be a pressing problem which needs to be identified and there has to be a solution and that's the yeah this is precisely the reason that we came across with the idea of tactile picture books uh, to communicate way in comparison to the existing braille books which exist so the tactile picture books which we have developed or designed you can say consist of simplified illustrations these simplified illustrations are designed in a manner such that it becomes very easy for the visually impaired to relate to and it is also supported with braille indications which will help them easily recognize these uh, illustrations these books are lightweight and durable they could be customized in the size and the color required relatively parents and the teachers say that they are also visually appealing especially for the low vision uh, impairments and most importantly it supports inclusion making these books accessible for one and all so i i did a lot of research uh, on the part where uh, you know the entire composition has been well thought of and taken care of while designing saying the sizing of the illustrations or the positioning and the placement of these illustrations the entire composition was thought of when we were designing these picture books now uh, i'll just uh, take you through uh, through my journey it's been like a seven year journey while i started interacting with the differently abled uh, it was one of my uh, college projects and uh, it has been like a design problem which i took up while i visited a differently abled school i somehow wasn't able to interact with them i felt a sense of helplessness uh, uh, there was a gap which ex existed between these communities so i identified this problem as a major concern and i took this up to solve and bridge this gap between the differently abled and the able and it was since then i started the the project uh, so i'll just take you i'll just share a few um, ground level challenges which i faced during the entire learning process so uh, we did a lot of research on the methods tactile embossing methods one was manual embossing which was done through thread illustrations if you will see it over here it was supported by braille indications then we did it through the use of 3d printing technology which obviously came out to be a costly job due to the technological limitations in india which was further cut down to a comparatively affordable tactile embossing method and for mass production so even after the advancements in technology in india the major challenge we still face is to provide a cost effective solution to manufacture these books for the visually impaired and integrate them fully into these public schools now since 
these schools also have a budget limitation and it is a major challenge because they are unable to invest it in tactile picture books what they can do to the max or to their best efforts is to invest it in a few books and keep these books in their library shelves but we need to get these books out of the library shelves and integrate them fully into a child's everyday learning making it an essential commodity for promoting see development so these are the challenges which i face majorly and i believe that this would also be prevalent and have an impact on other industries who are working with the visually impaired or you can say special needs and to seek protection on the entire design uh, process in the products we have also gone for a patent application and applied for pct so talking about recognitions associations and support these are the three important uh, elements which makes a tactile picture reading easy recognition is the first step in the process of learning to read so the constant process of um, recognizing and learning new things and then associating them which obviously which will obviously be supported by the by one to one assistance which we expect uh, parents and teachers to give to these visually impaired they are being introduced to tactile pictures for them so recognition association and assistance you can say support are very critical to introduce a impaired to tactile pictures now speaking of the response which we have received on the project was immense like the children were quite fascinated when they touched these books for the first time through their fingertips their faces expressed the joy curiosity and the pride that they were able to understand the shapes of the objects and figures and they were able to relate with them in a much better way with the help of braille indications since in the last few years there has been an increased focus on the education for children with uh, special needs the main struggle here is in special education is to ensure that every child with special need is mainstreamed and they are provided with the right resource support the needed resource support which which is required for now there are three vital factors which i believe uh, are essential or are needed to make inclusivity more essential first is awareness second is acceptance and third is accessibility so i'll give you a relevant example over here so since the time face masks became essential because people saw the need of wearing it they they wanted to protect themselves from virus it was due to the awareness of the situation and the, there was an acceptance that people have started wearing it and obviously there were a few government protocols which we had to follow to wear a mask so it it was accepted in the society thank you nupur thank you for your presentation i'll be asking a few questions to you later on we now move on to our next presentation we have miss amrita she is the ceo of stepping stone center welcome amrita and uh, over to you thank you um namaste to all um i'm amrita i'm the founding uh, ceo of uh, stepping stone center we are a school for children with autism and other developmental disabilities from bangalore uh, it is my honor to be here in this wonderful panel discussion and share this forum with amazing speakers and leaders my thanks to the organizers for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts here my humble thanks to the government of india under the able leadership of our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji for arranging this virtual toy fair promoting indigenous toys this panel discussion is a fantastic topic and it definitely it is a need of the hour toys for children with special needs as we know autism is a neurological disability and some of the common features seen in children with autism are lack in speech lack in language they don't have proper eye contact and because of that there is a lot of negative behavior globally the prevalence rate of autism is 1 in 68 children in india the stat says it's in 1 in 100 children 
I repeat again, it is one in 100 children, which translates to 13 million children. So we have 13 million children in our country living with autism today. This is definitely an alarming number and it also increases year after year. Having said that, let's, uh, I would like to list down the biggest challenges that we, that autism services in our India face. There is a big gap in terms of awareness, especially among the young parents and also the teachers uh, on the early signs of, on how to identify the early signs of autism and other developmental disabilities. So majority of the time, our children are getting screened and diagnosed little later. So that increases the gap in their learning and other disabilities as well, especially during the young ages between zero and six. Post that, there is also a huge gap in identifying the right professional to work and the right intervention which needs to be given to the child. The second main bottleneck that we find is the dearth need of uh, certified professionals to work. This down to the fact that there is not enough of specialized training courses for teachers. Awareness on the right set of toys and educational materials still remains as a challenge. The third main concern is inclusion. Majority of the mainstream schools are not equipped with the infrastructure or the resources to handle children with special needs. And also access to public systems like your transport, toilets, roads still remains as a challenge for my children. So it's, it's a very hard job to raise a child with special needs at home. While our children are special, so are our mothers. They are really super special. Eight, uh, eight years back, I personally saw one of my friends uh, undergoing a very difficult phase while her son was diagnosed with autism. That triggered me to do something for these children. I gave up my IT job and co-founded Stepping Stones in the year 2013. So that is a picture of my team there. We are a team of 48 professionals. It is a multidisciplinary team. We are a group of applied behavior analysis, ABA therapist, speech therapist, occupation therapist, psychologist, Montessorians, special educators, and of course, engineers like me as well. We have impacted close to about 500 plus children over the past seven years and graduated several of them into regular mainstream schools. We have initiated a training academy offering certification courses for aspiring teachers and parents through our international and national university collaborations. So all the evidence-based interventions that we do in our school is based on working with the child's play skills. So the play-based interventions are therapeutical and also psychological in nature. It increases a child's physical ability, the cognitive functional level, and the emotional needs. It builds a self-confidence, interaction, and sense of self. Whether it is a direct or an indirect play, it melts down to the toys and the materials which is used for children. Since this is a toy fair, I would like to emphasize the impact that a toy makes in a life of a child with special needs. So we use toys in all our therapies, in all our interventions, whether it is ABA, speech, or OT, which is occupation therapy. So toys like tools like aura motor sensory tools are used for improving the oral skills necessary for proper speech and also the feeding development. Flashcards engages active recall. It also allows for confidence-based repetition. Your multi-sensory toy stimulates the senses in children and adults by encouraging sight, touch, smell, sound, and movement. Our sensory toys can develop motor skills, hand-eye coordination, concentration focus, and thus reduces the anxiety level in our children. I'd like to use this forum to voice out the challenges that are faced by schools and parents when it comes to accessing toys and who are the very important stakeholder in a child's life. While designing toys for children with special needs, there are two important factors which needs to be uh, considered. One is the safety, 
Next is the durability. So in order not to compromise on the quality of the materials that we use in schools, schools like us either import the toys from other countries or make it in-house. Both ways are equally expensive. Uh, even the material sourced locally comes with a very bigger price. Another greatest challenge in, is in identifying the right materials for kids. My another panelist was also mentioning about the same. There are a lot of materials available in market which confuses parents on what to choose right for my child. Since we have eminent speakers here, I would like to leave some thoughts to ponder among all of us. There are a lot of ancient toys which we which are getting extinct these days, and it's very rare to find it in market. I remember playing uh, traditional games like marbles and uh, we say it's shori in uh, the south, southern India. These are these are very excellent for improving the grass and fine motor and especially the concentration for children. It may not be a bad idea to add an essence of innovation to our traditional toys and make it available and accessible in all the tires cities in our country. Uh, in that way, see, uh, since mothers are a primary caretaker when it comes to a child with special needs, it may be easy and familiar for the mothers to work with the materials that they have used in the past. With that, I conclude my presentation by a quote which says, how a society treats a disabled is a true measure of civilization. We as individuals have the responsibility in making this world, our country, a better place for the disabled. Thank you all for patiently listening to me. Thank you so much, Amrita. Well, um, you know, somebody once said that, keep your face always towards the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. You are uh, with a lot of determination, all three of you working for the special needs of these specially able children. And uh, we are very proud of you. We hope that this toy fair will help you in uh, marketing uh, your products. And it's such a huge opportunity for the toy industry that this uh, toy fair has created. We are very honored by uh, the presence of uh, Shakuntla ji amongst us. I now request her to please give us an overview and also tell us about the policies that her department, her uh, ministry is taking in this direction. Thank you. <clears throat> I would first uh, like to compliment each of the panelists for making a very imaginative and uh, creative presentations. And I'm sure a lot of hard work and dedication has gone into each uh, sort of project and each outcome of what uh, research and, uh, you know, uh, pedagogical and uh, academic and the scientific activities that you have undertaken to come to such a point. But um, being the secretary of the Department for Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities, I thought I should just give a brief introductory about the legislation which mandates empowerment of children with special needs uh, socially, economically, and you know, in, in, in all respects, from the point of view of inclusive education, and uh, also to see that whether we can phase out special education, because in a special education school, they would be learning something which is repetitive in nature. But uh, inclusive education actually looks at his empowerment in the true sense of the term so that he can lead a dignified and an independent life. Uh, we also look at how to uh, sort of build curriculum for inclusive education for not only just disabled children with sensory impairments, but children with intellectual disabilities, uh, with learning disabilities, neurological disabilities, and even the blood disorders like thalassemia, sickle cell, hemophilia, and also, uh, you know, people who have, uh, you know, Down syndrome, autism, cerebral palsy, and then uh, chronic neurological disorder, Parkinson's disease, and so many more other disabilities. And with all these disabilities of physical, intellectual, 
uh, delayed developmental disabilities, blood disorders, we have one strong vertical of mental illness where you're talking of uh, anxiety, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder, you're talking of uh, heredity problems also of schizophrenia and bipolar. So uh, a lot of f uh, scientific research, a lot of uh, institutional building and human resource training and capacity building is required on all fronts. So any willing partner is uh, uh, very welcome to this department and to this sector. And even when I took over charge of this, uh, this post as Secretary of Disabilities in November 2017, uh, except for the fact that I was armed with this act, I really didn't see much support systems on the ground. Uh, yes, but we have in Government of India, uh, you know, set up this independent department. We had eight national institutes, one on speech and hearing, one on locomotor, one on visually impaired, one on multiple disabilities, one on, you know, intellectual disabilities, and one on sort of, you know, training and research for corrective surgery in Nittar. And, uh, you know, all these institutes have done wonderful, wonderful, laudable work, but each of them were vertical institutes, uh, you know, dedicating their entire research and training towards one sort of aspect of disabilities, which was more understood in terms of uh, visual hearing and locomotor. So intellectual and mental illness and the other disabilities like autism, cerebral palsy, and even maybe a uh, sort of dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, uh, we had to find, uh, you know, the base from where we could start. And then uh, I found that having worked in the Ministry of Health, where I, where I was looking after the vaccination program and also the non-communicable diseases, and, uh, you know, we built super speciality hospitals and having worked as a chief secretary in the remote state of Arunachal Pradesh and seen very close aspects of civic administration and uh, general administration in uh, the government of Delhi and having worked in uh, very sort of noble sectors like renewable energy and uh, the challenges that are there in remote places, I found that children's education I think is one of the most critical aspect and it's, I think, the centrality of uh, social and economic growth. And if we leave the disabled children uh, to fend for themselves in, in any systems of education, whether it is Samagra, Shiksha, Abhyan, we would not be able to actualize what is envisaged in the rights of persons with disabilities unless we have assistive devices tools of learning and accessible infrastructure and awareness amongst parents to have confidence in the set of assistive devices, the tools and the teachers and the ethos and culture of inclusive learning. And that was a challenging task which my department alone couldn't have achieved without people like you who would come forward and actually help us, uh, you know, see that the gaps that are there should be bridged by, uh, you know, by collective and collaborative partnership. In that respect, I would say that while the vertical institutes were there, one thing I, I could bring from my health ministry experience is that uh, disability inclusive early intervention care, while the identification could be in the health centers, the treatment and the training would be purely rehabilitative science, which means do we have enough adequate number of special educators? Do we have awareness amongst parents? Do we have such centers which are accessible, affordable? And uh, do we have, uh, you know, such multisensory integrated units? So a thought crossed my mind that while the vertical institutes have taken so much time to address these issues, what is the pedagogical and the curriculum for such trained human resources who would serve both the medical side and the rehabilitation side. And I often found that I could not convey to many of us, even in very uh, sort of, you know, uh, uh, technically senior positions, that when I talk of habilitation, there is a distinction between what is habilitation and rehabilitation. Rehabilitation could be anything between a person who 
uh, sort of, you know, had a stroke and had, had a surgery, if he's lost his, uh, you know, functions of speech, and if he's lost lost his motor skills, skills, he would be needed to be rehabilitated by an occupational therapist or a speech therapist. But when a child is born with, uh, you know, autism or with uh, delayed speech faculty or with, you know, cerebral palsy where, you know, he's, he has an arrested brain growth, he would not be able to walk and talk maybe for the rest of his life unless there is a proper intervention care. And that is rehabilitation science, which is neither anything to do with surgery, nor has it got to do with pharmacology, nor has it got to do with imaging or radiological or, you know, uh, other medical protocols that would be required for uh, for 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 non-communicable diseases or where surgery and pharmacology would be required. So I was thinking that how can we do an early intervention care? I realized that if I go to the state governments, you know, it has taken us so many years to build the vaccination program, the mother and child program, the eradication of uh, tropical diseases, and we still have, you know, tuberculosis, we still have uh, so we still had polio strains and we got polio eradicated with so many uh, sort of uh, vaccination and universal immunization program. So early intervention care for dis disabled children and for rehabilitation therapy would be Greek and Latin to most of us, I thought. So I said, let me start with my own institutes where I have the infrastructure, I have trained human resource and I could deploy my own institutes resources and uh, you know, um, uh, infrastructure uh, to at least create the centers at the secondary and at the tertiary level before I uh, have adequate number of human resources to roll them out into the districts. And I personally feel that the, the subject being a state government, central government should not go beyond the district, below the district. And if we can reach up to the district level, even if we have one center in every district or one good center in a state, where a good institutional uh, sort of, you know, ethos can showcase early intervention, I would uh, be able to uh, disseminate the information to the community and the community resilience and awareness can be uh, sort of so much percolated down to the district and to the subdivision and to the village level. Having seen that the ASHAs, ANMs, and also the uh, Anganwari workers who have worked so hard for their a nutrition program, the mother and child program, and for, uh, you know, the early intervention uh, program in terms of, uh, you know, health and education for both, both mother and child and nutrition. I find that we needed to have a community-based cross-disability multipurpose worker. So we have now tied up with the Melbourne Disability Institute too. We are, we are almost there. We have developed a curriculum called the community-based uh, you know, rehabilitation worker who would be trained for six months. And thereafter, we could uh, see that at least one community-based rehabilitation worker should be there in every district to work uh, in close concert with the district health intervention centers, the mother and child nutrition, and the universal immunization program. But my challenge was that identification of disability amongst community and parents was a huge subject which was left uh, almost sort of a, a huge unmet need. And once the disability is diagnosed in terms of whether the child has autism or Down syndrome, where is the care center or how would inclusive education be uh, an actuality in terms of uh, uh, actual curriculum and centers being there to help the parents and the mother. I found that uh, when I talked of early intervention center, I. I uh, had to bring in issues of health where, you know, low vision children would have to be identified by an optometrist or an ophthalm ophthalmologist or, you know, they would have to be given spectacles so their vision could be corrected. But I also thought that if a hearing uh, sort of, you know, impairment child is there, he would need to be identified, given a cochlear implant, and that cochlear implant could help, uh, you know, the mother and child to communicate, but you need a speech therapist and a speech therapist need not be there everywhere. And we needed to empanel hospitals where doctors and ENT surgeons would have had to necessarily uh, sort of, you know, uh, conduct 25 such surgeries to be empaneled uh, with our All India Speech and Hearing Institute. And for autism, uh, often we found that 
between a neuropediatrician and a clinical psychologist and a special educator, uh, one would say, no, we, we need to look at it from the neurological point of view. Somebody would say, no, we need to look at it from the special education point of view. But every parent's experience is so different from the other. Again, for dyslexia, I found that for dyslexia, children would be sort of uh, assessed as children who cannot recognize letters, words. They would write the letters in obverse manner and also comprehending concept building and writing sentences and taking them ahead in class uh, sort of, you know, performance was a challenge. And if I talk to the parents, each parent would have a different experience to share. Therefore, I thought that, you know, why don't I uh, sort of coordinate with the uh, higher education and the uh, elementary school education? And I found that uh, all the secretaries have always been uh, sort of very open to the discussion. And it is only that when we look at how to share our experiences, get the right kind of expert, the right parental input, the right sort of civil society organizations who are our partners who have worked so much in this field in different aspects to look at the big picture of how to develop curriculum, build human resource and start the early intervention center. So I'm happy to inform to you all of you that next week we are launching seven uh, early intervention centers in our national institutes and uh, seven composite regional institutes uh, uh, will have early intervention centers. And in this, this, these early intervention centers we have the parental counseling unit, we have the audiology unit, we have the speech unit, we have the uh, you know, uh, uh, clinical psychology rehabilitation unit, we have the special education unit, and we have the uh, you know, uh, multi-sensory integrated unit. And all that you have shown, I think are much more are already there. And I think we, we would be able to sort of uh, see that a number of cases and children are already coming into some of these centers before they are even being inaugurated. I would like to also thank the Honorable President of India, who, uh, you know, when, when we showcased and uh, we, we presented the Divya Kala Shakti program, which was a cultural program to showcase talent of disabled artists, uh, he was uh, so overwhelmed by the children's performance that, you know, dwarfs could sing and dance, autistic children could actually sort of, you know, uh, give a very creative display of art and, uh, you know, a hearing impaired uh, uh, girl could actually do Kathak dance and, uh, you know, uh, synchronize her steps to the feel of music. So their ability to even compete with some of the be their best within their own respective fields was something which overwhelmed him so much that he decided to come to our center again and we said, yes, he actually asked us, what can I gift you? So we said, we want an early intervention center. So he came to Kolkata to our National Institute of Locomotive Disability, where we got an early intervention center. And from his uh, sort of, you know, support and endorsement, I thought we must build up and scale up the early intervention centers. And today we have got 14 early intervention centers ready to launch. And I can share the YouTube. And when we have, uh, the centers being launched, we would like to invite all of you and see that our early intervention centers are the places where all your toys will go into. And then uh, maybe when we go to the districts and when we go to the school integrated system of universal design of curriculum, I can see that there's a great potential for your toys to go there. My only worry is that, you know, uh, uh, toys have always come, uh, you know, from the uh, Western concept. Western concept of, you know, whether it is Snow White or whether it is, uh, you know, Cinderella or whether it is, you know, the, the Robin Hood or whether it's, uh, you know, all kinds of toys have been associated with Western classical, Western fairy tale, Western stories. Uh, so uh, I thought when we were actually talking about the classical uh, sort of and the mythological aspect, we have one, we want to emphasize the message of Ashtavakra, who was the sage who uh, sort of actually uh, emphasized the fact that if you think your disability is your weakness, you will always be dependent on somebody. If you feel that your disability is your strength, you can actually surpass, uh, you know, even the abled persons in terms of your ability to perform. And I find that many of our inventions and in innovations in history have come from uh, people who had special needs. 
uh, whether it was an Albert Einstein or whether it was an Alfred Nobel or whether it was a Beethoven, music or inventions. The, uh, the story that uh, therefore sh uh, would, would be, uh, so that we would be looking at is the connect between uh, our great need in the rural areas of uh, India where you know different cultures uh, specific to the needs of the community are natural resources specific to the uh, livelihood and to the sort of ambience and to the uh, you know uh, uh, interactivity between nature and community uh, where uh, classical mythological sort of uh, stories of in in the indian context and also uh, wooden toys or bamboo toys or toys which are made from, uh, you know, Indian sort of uh, material from the Indian natural resources, I think would serve a great purpose, but quality and content must be uh, woven in, in the manner where uh, our experience from the institution can also be shared with you. We, we as, as a mother, even I used to be very worried with my children would be sort of, you know, biting into a stuffed toy or a plastic toy. We often felt that, you know, it's not good for his health and uh, you know for a disabled child for assistive devices to be used constantly for his cognitive motor skills development and also for his uh, sort of understanding concepts would need to be uh, more in terms of uh, you know uh, that, that that the that the adverse effects of uh, the material used for the toys should not be should be sort of taken care of and we should use sort of maybe organic and local materials not so much in terms of uh, you know the fact that availability of natural resources also come with a cost to see that the toys could be made uh, more uh, sort of indigenously and it's a great welcome step from all of you that you are thinking of the indian toys and if we can showcase that such successful partnership of the early intervention care assistive tools and devices for the samagra shiksha abhyan and tactile surfaces can optimize the brains of the children to score 100 on 100 in math for a blind child, we would actually, uh, you know, break the myth of the story that internet always sort of enhances knowledge and power. It's actually the sense of feel and the sense of imprint of uh, images, uh, which, which helps a child and not so much, uh, you know, the, the environment in terms of their uh, you know, distractive sort of uh, distractive way of sort of, you know, making them get into a habit. So in, with these words, I would like to once again uh, thank all of you for having invited me to participate. It's a great concept because uh, for me, it had been a big challenge to get the early intervention care to also introduce concepts of universal design uh, of curriculum for the primary and for the uh, middle and secondary schools of education to make universities inclusive, to have human resource, not only to serve the medical side, but also to serve the rehabilitative sides, to see that habilitation must be a concept in rehabilitation protocol and behavioral science, which must address not only, uh, you know, repetitive uh, sort of behavior and how to see that community must understand that, uh, you know, the creative needs of the child must be met, uh, but also from the point of view of, uh, you know, that the newer disabilities, we don't have trained human resource. And the earlier we recognize that, the sooner we will be able to be equipped with handling the situation where corporates, governments, and uh, sort of, you know, uh, research institutions will need to collaborate to take uh, the idea forward about what uh, health problems and what uh, sort of social, mobile, uh, social and medical sort of protocols need to go hand in hand and rehabilitation should be not only thought of as at the end stage, but habilitation should be seen at the beginning stage as a part of human growth and human existence. So with these words, I would like to thank you once again. Now I would like to request my director, uh, Dr. Nachiketa, who has done excellent, excellent work he has been a director in the National Institute for Visually Impaired in Dehradun. Right now, he's currently serving as director in the uh, Institute for Multiple Disabilities, Chennai. So uh, you would like to go through his presentation. He has developed a lot of concepts, and he has also tried to see that uh, this concept of 
uh, deploying toys for cognitive and uh, motor skills development in the school curriculum of children and for special needs children should be uh, sort of you know made more popular to for its wider and deeper acceptance thank you over to you thank you ma'am for giving this opportunity and uh, the topic today is the application of uh, the topic uh, did i overshoot there have been uh, the topic which i have been asked to speak about is development of uh, multi sensory toys for children with special needs the national institute for the empowerment of persons with multiple disability is uh, situated in chennai the same place which uh, created out the bronze and nataraj by the cholas in the 12th century and uh, today we are having this uh, webinar uh, the web meet and the uh, uh, the, the toy fair in delhi uh, which was created by you wish or krishna and is popular for the ram leela now both of these places if you see a shiva dances out to destruction with fire in one hand and the creation the damru in the other hand simultaneously he dances over to that and uh, we know the life of rama and krishna were known as leelas that's how profound we have uh, the understanding about what play is in our life so nobody else other than us can truly give a real in depth knowledge about what play is and what toys are next slide please the next key word is multi sensory development of multi sensory multi sensory multi sensory means as one of the speakers very correctly said seven senses when the child plays out the child hears out something sees something smells something tastes something has some movements has some balance and finally knows how things are around him and does adaptive behavior for example without putting that particular flower in my mouth i very much know how it will taste in my mouth and how this particular piece of wood will taste out because sometime back down there in my childhood i had put both of these things in my mouth so uh, it's the play which actually gives me the fundamentals of what life is and it's very essential that's what the multi sensory would be the next key word is for children with special needs the moment the word special need comes in we start restricting ourselves to children with uh, disabilities so it's actually the entire spectrum and disability is not something which is into a silo so uh, the thought of merging out everybody into one school by the samagra shiksha abhiyan would be possible if we start things thinking in this particular way now as far if we want to develop out toys for children with uh, disabilities then uh, for this purpose i think children should be grouped out something like this one group of children who have challenges in getting in information it's like uh, the information is out there but it doesn't reach into the place where it is being processed out this is actually heard out here so this has to go in here till here to be heard out so a group which for whom getting this information reaching out here is a challenge and another group where the information reaches out here but processing it is a difficulty so the moment we start thinking about putting in children information to children with disabilities through different senses and getting it processed out we have to start thinking in terms of these two domains probably that's what the accessible india campaign is all about it's about making information accessible physically and cognitively we all have heard about the fox and the crane story both were friends they hunted out the fox invited one day and said okay you catch out fish i'll cook it i'll serve it to you served it out but served it in a pot it was not accessible to the person <coughs> the crane could not access it the crane also reciprocated it served it in a plate it was not accessible model of the story is that it's not that both of them could not digest out the fish curry it's about accessibility so this particular tumbler or the plate is actually the barrier so the moment we start releasing out a 10000 words sign language dictionary we are actually making information accessible to another group of deaf people so qualitatively ye bilkul choti baat nahi ye buniyadi farq aa jata hai bilkul to hame sochna is tarike se hame nahi ye sochna hai ki ha ye apne mein ek alag hai to isko ye sensory toys de de ye alag hai to isko ek alag cheez de de hame sochna universal design mein again about the indian games the type of games what is fundamentally different about it next slide if you look at the traditional games and the contemporary games what is the challenge now it is loneliness autism why has this particular autism come up so rapidly that's something which is which has gone wrong with our entire life say and so with our games all the traditional games the entire set of senses will be what we will not you not see a person playing it alone there will be a group of people the best thing which i heard from a uh, associate professor in special education इसे डॉक्टर साहब अपने बच्चे को नीचे भेजा कीजिए शाम के वक्त खेलने को मैं पूछा क्यों क्योंकि बच्चा दूसरे बच्चों से लड़ता है फिर दूसरे दिन सुलझाना भी तो सीखता है वो आप किस किताब में सिखाएंगे तो प्ले इज नॉट जस्ट अबाउट जस्ट प्लेइंग इट्स अबाउट समथिंग एल्स इट्स अबाउट द 
two things, you know, livelihood skills and life skills. It's about life skills. So the moment we go into traditional games, there is something fundamentally very different about it. And if you can look about the contemporary game, it's all about I, me, myself, me creating another world within me. That's probably what schizophrenia is, if it goes to a larger extent. So the type of games which children are playing, they are also very important. If there's a child who is zero to one year of age, and wants to reach out this, you can see that 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 the moment you start having this particular understanding that the developmental leak will be happening out like this amongst by saying, आप इस टॉय को उसको चाहिए उसको ऊपर रख दीजिए दो साल का बच्चा देखेगा कुछ नहीं कर पाएगा रोएगा धोएगा ज्यादा लेकिन दो साल जैसे ही बच्चा वो एक कुर्सी लेगा उसके ऊपर खड़ा होगा वो खींच के लेगा मींस एंड एंड्स ये कंप्यूटर को इस्तेमाल करना ऐसे ऐसे मार्क वो मींस एंड एंड्स का ही एक्सटेंशन है वैसे 3 साल होते उसके साथ-साथ करस्पोंड क्या करता है इसलिए 1 साल के पहले का बच्चा बात नहीं करता सिंगल वर्ड्स में नहीं बोलता कि कुत्ता बोलने के लिए कुत्ते की छवि तो उसके दिमाग में होनी चाहिए वो छवि बनती नहीं कि ऑब्जेक्ट परमानेंट सही नहीं तो खिलौने अगर हम उस तरह का देना शुरू कर दें बच्चे को कि ये ये कॉन्सेप्ट्स हम टारगेट करें तो उसका बाकी का डेवलपमेंट अलग-अलग हमें नहीं लेना पड़ेगा कि हम कॉग्निटिव के लिए अलग कुछ करें सेंसरी के लिए अलग करें कम्युनिकेशन के लिए अलग करें इमोशनल के लिए अलग करें इट कैन बी टारगेटेड आउट होलिस्टिकली प्रोवाइडेड वी गो इन टर्म्स ऑफ द डेवलपमेंटल माइंडसेट वी हैव अ स्कीम नोन एज द एडिप स्कीम द एडिप स्कीम एनेबल्स अस टू प्रोवाइड आउट अ सेट ऑफ टॉयज एंड टीचिंग लर्निंग मटेरियल सो सिंस द लास्ट 5 इयर्स आई हैव द एडिप कोऑर्डिनेटर विद मी आल्सो वी वर गिवन अ टास्क to identify out a set of toys which can be given under added to the set of population which we cater to children with autism cerebral palsy deaf blindness multiple disability this is what we are doing at this point of time thank all of you for the kind admission thank you ma'am for giving the support thank you well, thank you so much uh, nachi kita ji and thank you ma'am for giving him an opportunity to apprise us of the work which has been done um, till now and the things which are in pipeline your uh, ministry is really dedicated to the cause making the right and appropriate toys that challenge the differently able children's interest and are closely linked to their skill level and ability is not an easy task the three panelists who are engaged in developing and manufacturing such uh, special toys for children with special needs are doing a tremendous job and secretary department of empowerment of persons with disabilities gamlin ji is dedicated to the cause and creating new opportunities for the inclusive growth of such children and for their rehabilitation and um, mr nachiketa who just apprised us of the wonderful work which has been done by his department so um, i think we would like to now thank all of you for your inputs and the hope that that this india toy fair is a huge success it's a huge platform for everyone for all the stakeholders and hope it serves the purpose the vision of honorable prime minister is really really applaudable thank you for joining us in this uh, webinar thank you ma'am thank you all the panelists thank you